ladybugs and gentle worms. Today we will be examining the historical period known as French Indochina, or also known as in French, Indochine Française. Ah, je veux parler un peu français, c'est pourquoi j'ai choisi cet événement. Je pourrais faire tout cette vidéo en français? Nah. To educate. The first Frenchman ever recorded to have gone to Vietnam was Alexandre de Rhodes. He studied Vietnamese for about three years before going and is actually very influential in Vietnamese culture. Along with locals, he helped perfect Quoc Nhu, a Vietnamese writing system still in use today. He was also responsible for creating many Vietnamese prayers. He's estimated to have converted around 6,500 Christians. In 1630, he was expelled from Vietnam by Trinh Trong, who became concerned that he was a spy. This was the beginning of the relationship between France and Vietnam. The Vietnamese welcomed missionaries and traders for the things they brought. However, this relationship did not come without its struggles. When French nationals were killed in Vietnam, authorities used this as an excuse to gain more power. The ruling party soon began to see the Catholic presence in their country as a threat. Missionaries became agents of imperialism and Vietnamese Christians traitors. After the inability to reach a peaceful solution, Admiral De Junoli ambushed the city Torin and continued to fight them for many months. After a lack of success, he sought and received permission from Napoleon III to ambush a city with the name of Sagan. Poorly armed, it fell into their hands. Many disapproved of this action, and he was soon replaced by Admiral Page. Both parties signed a peace treaty. The Vietnam promised that they wouldn't perse against, persecute against Catholics, and France promised not to take over anymore or expand. They also promised to open up trade and gave three islands to fr the French. The French then gave this, these provinces the most unpronounceable name ever, Cochin China. Cochin China. King Nordem of Thailand then seized power to France, and the French already controlled Cambodia. After two more wars, France officially gained all the nations that were in Indochina. This included modern day nations Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Question historians and people have to ask about French imperialism was what motivated them? The Industrial Revolution drove the need for resources that would be used to that would be used in factories to make goods for everyone in the Western world. And Vietnam places like Vietnam and even Cambodia had an abundance of what they needed. So that was a very big, big, big factor for why um, the, French was, the French were so invested. In addition, they had a lot more access to trade and routes that were in Asia, and especially in a time like the Industrial Revolution, as mentioned before, that is incredibly beneficial for them. In that time, and even some countries today, uh, settling another country is a matter of pride and almost a superiority. The settling of another country also was driven by political and patriotic reasons and by taking over what you would see as threats to your country does a lot to reassure you. Vietnam had persecuted against Catholic missionaries and Vietnamese Catholics within their empire, so it was easy to see that those actions as a threat towards Christianity as a whole. It did a lot to justify the imperialism of Vietnam. Another factor that really drove home France's perceived need to settle Asia was what the child The idea that it, it was a white man's responsibility to, to teach other races how to live and what was best for them in society. They believed that by being in control, they perfected society. This could include religion, pushing forward certain justice systems, and other societal um, values that the West hold, held. With French rule, Vietnam went through 
multitude, a multitude of changes. Some of these could be considered good. Um, the French brought a railroad station to their, the countries, which was the pride of all, and electricity to bigger cities and towns. They also built roads and bridges. They also adjusted the justice system into what some could saw, say a better one. For example, there weren't as many harsh punishments. Women weren't trampled by elephants when they committed adul adultery, which is always a win. Those wealthy enough in, in Fr French Indochina were actually sent to school established by um, the, over the overrulers. Many Vietnamese and others were educated in, their, in the schools they set up. Some even went to college in France. Politicians like Paul Domer wanted Indochina to fund itself in a way. Solution? Get them addicted to opium. Once many became addicted, he raised its tax. France also substantially raised their taxes, causing many of their subjects in Vietnam to lose their livelihoods and their houses and their jobs and their families. France also substantially raised their taxes, causing many of their subjects in Vietnam to lose their livelihoods and their houses and their jobs and their families. The French built beautiful cities using forced labor. French Indochina became one of the prized possession of the French and their people. It's called the French Pearl of the Orient, and they were very proud of the fact that they now had people in Asia who could speak fluent French, knew French literature and art, and they thought they had succeeded in, in setting up society there. As the 20th century began, Vietnamese, the Vietnamese and others in French Indochina became extremely disillusioned with their leading, with the leading class. Figures like Fan Long, a former monk, uh, decided to revolt again. Members would wear white and attack French officials. After Long was captured by the French and executed, his followers attacked and ransacked. Sajin. French troops defeated them, but this was the mark of the beginning of a huge rebellion in French Indochina. America disapproved of the job that France was doing in their colonies and made it very clear that after the war they were not allowed to have them again. World leaders searched for the right person to lead French Indochina, Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia, but no one was really stepping up to the plate and the people were becoming more revolutionary every day and it got to the point that it was so bad that it eventually went to the newly started model UN when France in 1956 France officially decided to give up their colonies in China in Asia. We can French evacuated French Indochina and they left no societal structures which caused the Communist Party to move in and that eventually led to the Vietnam War. I guess you could say in a way, France brought in the modern age to Vietnam and they impact them in a lot of ways today, but some of these ways weren't really ethical. It's difficult to talk about imperialism in any society because at the end of the day, we don't know what that civilization would have ended up to, ended to be like. No doubt, many good things were introduced under the French rule, but also many bad things were too. Like any morally great event in our history, we have to appreciate the good that came out of it, but also recognize the bad equally as much. Ladies and gentle worms, I am very thankful that you have watched this, and I hope you have a great day. And remember, not everything is as clean cut as one would want it to be.